Hello and welcome to this Tornado Outbreak Short Summary. In this one, we are going to be looking at the relatively rare outbreak that happened on September 24th, 2001. We had, well, first of all, over here, we have a skew T setup. So this shows, uh, this shows all kinds of things that I'm not going to go through all of it though, but we had a relatively weak but still very viable setup for tornadoes on this day and it was only a day one slight risk despite this we had dews of up to 70 degrees nearly in maryland which getting that far north and having that high of a dew point is definitely not that common at all especially in september where that's the first month of fall and we are now out we're now out of summer November being, of course, the first month of fall, but, you know, October being the first month of fall. I promise I'm not stupid. We had surface scape. That's that first measure right here at around 1538 joules per kilogram, according to the skew -T. So this is showing that we have plenty of cape. However, it all depends on the shear, which was relatively weak, not the, not the greatest. But we do have a very low, uh, low lower cloud level, or the LCL. So this is providing a much less distance between where the wall cloud and the well the base of the cloud is at, to where the ground is at. So this is a shorter distance that the tornado needs to cover in the first place. That's why the dews are so significant here. We would have a total of nine tornadoes, so not too many. However, three of them would be significant, meaning EF2 and above. We had a the first tornado watch, despite me not being able to find a picture of the tornado watch, was first issued at 13.30 cent, uh, Eastern Daylight Time, not Central Daylight Time, Eastern Daylight Time, and would last until 8 o'clock Central Daylight Time. In total, this event would cause two deaths as well as 57 injuries. $101.5 million in damage would be caused from all the tornadoes. Our first notable is also the most intense. Chronologically, this is the first of our notables to happen, of course. This is the Rixieville, Virginia to northeast of Waterloo, Virginia F4. This tornado crossed around 10 miles, was approximately 69 meters wide at its widest, and caused two injuries, despite moving directly through countryside estates and Jeffersonson. This tornado would touch down to the southeast of Rixieville's main center, however still in Rixieville proper, and a tree would be blown into a home around Rixieville on, on Route 640. There was a rapid intensification close to Oakshire, or Oakshade, sorry, this is Oakshade, just two, again, just two miles later to F4 strength. So this was very rapid intensification. It was around here that this tornado would flatten a three-story brick home. It was estimated to have had maximum speeds, maximum wind speeds specifically, of 225 miles per hour, with the minimum being the minimum F4 wind speeds, which is 207 miles per hour. Later on, this tornado would then weaken in strength, badly damaging Jeffersonson at F2 strength. Now, why you would name a town Jeffersonton is a is a mystery to me. I I, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Next here we have the technically from Windsor Estates to all the way up to near the Pentagon, F2, officially according to the uh, site that I did indeed get the tornado tracks from, which will be a source down below in the description if you want to take a look at it. It's a web archive so it may have a tr some trouble loading, it did for me multiple times, is Franconia, Virginia, all the way to Washington, D.C. This tornado was an F2. 
This tornado would travel 15 miles and reached 91 meters at its widest point. Thankfully, this tornado caused zero casualties. This tornado, as you can see, was constantly swaying between F1 and F0 strength. However, it did eventually reach F2 at one point in its life. However, that is not shown here along its track. Would it damage the town of Alexandria at F0 strength? By the time it crossed the, Pot the Potomac River, it was at an F0 strength and was relatively slowly, although still weakening and roping out at this point. Most notably, this tornado would pass right by the Jefferson Memorial and even the Washington Monument. This is where we have the picture of, well, a tornado and, would you have guessed it, the Washington Monument. This tornado would thankfully lift before hitting the Pentagon or the Smithsonian uh, Museum or the Capitol Building all three of which were very close to this tornado, however, were not hit by this tornado at all. Again, quite thankfully. Next up here is the Chillum, Maryland to Savage, Maryland. What a savage name. This tornado was an F3 at its maximum point. This tornado would path 17 and a half miles and be even wider than our previous tornado at approximately 182 meters wide. This tornado would cause more than 50 injuries, two deaths, and $73 million in damage. As you can see, this tornado did indeed hit quite a few towns. University of Maryland suffered some relatively major damage University of Maryland is in College Park, so it is U of M uh, College Park, where College Park was also, as you can imagine, uh, badly damaged as well. Many cars and you didn't see that. <laughs> many car many trees and cars were also thrown by this tornado, and it was in one of these cars that the two deaths was caused, unfortunately. Now. All of our sources I listed down right here, but they will also again be in the description as well. So you could take a look at them yourselves rather than having to remember URLs. But looking at our uh, averages from 1950 to 2014 with September touchdowns, this is a relatively more rare mid-Atlantic outbreak, especially in September. Granted, the whole of New England doesn't necessarily see tornadoes the same way the Midwest does. These states are smaller, first of all, so that will lead to lower averages. But you also have the Appalachians running all the way down from New York to Georgia, which really constricts where necessarily tornadoes can form. Now, of course, tornadoes can really form anywhere they, c they can. Um, as long as the conditions are right. But you can also have very wrong conditions near a mountainous range, as you can imagine, which is why, again, New England doesn't necessarily get tornadoes all that much. On top of this, one cell was cyclic and produced two out of the three notables that we talked about here. This is also one of the worst tornadic events for the Washington-Baltimore metropolitan area. Keep in mind, a metropolitan area is an extremely large area. It includes not only the towns, but the suburbs, as well as any connecting transportation to and from the metropolitans. So this is a very wide area, but still, again, one of the worst tornadic events for this area. And that, folks, is all that I have for this outbreak that occurred in September of 2001. I hope you, of course, have learned something from these videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.